God bless all my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of His holiness. So just real briefly, I just wanted to share this message, you know, that I received from the Lord by the grace of God. What does it mean to be a true Christian? What does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to truly have the Holy Spirit? A true Christian is one who have heard the word of God, the gospel. They agreed with what they heard. They understood what they heard. They received what they heard. And their conscience revealed to them that these things are true that these things are just and that they're right right a Christian that's born again means that this person has been baptized with water partake in Christ's death and resurrection and also have received the Holy Spirit because the Bible says no longer that I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So the secret of salvation is that Christ wants to be himself in you. What does it mean to have the Holy Ghost? It's a supernatural entity. A spirit from heaven, from God, the spirit of God, right? You'll get confused if you say, that's why the Bible says God will walk in you and he'll be your God, right? So the spirit is the spirit of God in you that enables you to do all that the Bible tells you in the, in the, for, in the, in the, in the, the New Testament, in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit empowers you gives you supernatural power there's no reason to name all those things now right but it gives you power to be able to fulfill and to complete the assignment that God has given you as a genuine believer a Christian right that's why you see where it says he make you perfect and He'll keep you from uh, he'll keep you from falling, you know, he'll make a way for you to escape your temptation and you know that um you know he'll keep you from evil. You see all these scriptures. So when a person is a Christian, they are Christ like. That means when when Christ faced persecution, when he faced angry people, when he faced being called names. When he faced, you know, violence or when he faced pain that was afflicted from people, he responded in righteousness. That's a Christian. Right. So everything that you read about Christ, how he dealt with situations, how he handled himself when he faced persecution, the way he lived, how he was meek. How he was kind, how he had compassion, how he wasn't concerned with material riches. He didn't walk around saying, I'm the greatest. Call me this, call me that. He told people, don't even tell people what I did for you. He said, who do people say I am? They said, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist. Then Peter said, you are the Christ. He said, tell no man these things. Because the Bible said in Philippians that he was a man of no reputation. God exalted him. He never tried to exalt himself. That's a Christian. So a Christian will mirror what you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Be not deceived from people that come and speak and mention my master's name. And talk about all these different things. That they create to make their false preaching sound entertaining. Right? They add suspensefulness to a drama. 
They talk about your life struggles. They talk about people doing you wrong. They talk about how God going to promote you. They don't even preach like Jesus preached. They don't even teach like he teaches. So the devil did those things. So a true Christian is one who is going to live like Christ in every situation because it is no longer you that lives but the spirit of the living God is living in you. Your body is now just a vessel. It's a shell. It's a shell, a coconut, like a coconut. When, a, when there's water inside and the coconut meat, that's what your body is when the spirit comes in. You're just housing something. That's what is called the Holy Ghost. You're going to do what God calls you to do. You're going to live holy. You're going to live righteous. You're going to live godly. You're going to live spiritual. You're going to live a perfect life in Christ because you have a perfect spirit in this weak and in, in, in mortal body. But the spirit is immortal and the spirit is supernatural and it comes with power. When you buy a car, that's a V8. It's a bigger engine. It has more horsepower, right? When you buy a motorcycle and you get on it, you vroom, right? The engine that it has to make it go that fast. So when you receive something from God, who is power, right? Who name mean power. Everything he did is in power. Everything he does is in power. When you receive that from power, then that means it's power in you. You're no longer gonna be just a regular person that's just walking around and saying, oh, I live for God. God is gonna do Many things The devil will try to mimic those things But it's no consistency When you're a true Christian You have the spirit God's going to take you And place you in many different situations But he's going to be telling you Everything before it happens You will never say Why is this happening When God is with you If you're truly sent From God he will direct you and lead you every step of the way. You're not going to be confused. You're not going to be saying, I wonder what God is wanting me to do. I'm feeling compelled to go to Africa. I want to open up. That is all your flesh. And that's the devil and the demons that's making you think those ways. When you're in the will of God, everything that goes on in your life, you already know about it because you're in his will. So what that means is that if God chooses to say, OK, I'm going to send this person here, you already know before it happens. I'm not saying from man telling you, I'm not saying from you doing research, I'm saying God communicating that to you. Right. And then when he does do it, you're not going to have to ask anybody or say, hey, I need to borrow some money. I need to, you know, I got to take some love offerings. I need to get some seeds sown. He's going to already have it done. The people heart, like, I'm not about to share all this stuff. Because Satan will take these things that I'm saying and try to make people believe that's watching these videos, that they have the Holy Ghost, that they have the Spirit, and that God is working through them from what I'm telling people. But all I'm trying to tell you is that you're never confused when you're in the will of God. You will never, ever say, I don't understand what's going on. What is God saying? You are able to communicate to him right away. Right now, if I need to ask him a question, I can hear from him right now. That's what having a Holy Spirit is. Okay? You pray to God right now and tell me what you hear. Don't let the demons deceive you. If you have demons in you and you pray, don't let them deceive you. Right? Ask some things that you know Satan can't do. Ask some things that you know he can't tell you. Don't say, what's this person's name next to you? He knows that because the person has a demon in them as well. Oh, what's the person's phone number? And you go, oh, your phone number is this. That's Satan can do all those things, right? Right? But he can't heal you. He can't cast out devils. He can't perform miracle signs and wonders. The Bible says he can come with all power, signs, and lying wonders. But he can't mimic the things of God. Remember that. Deliverances and miracles and healings came first by Jesus. Satan, cop, he, he, he watched those things and tried to create these things. Right? But it's not the same. 
So a true Christian is never saying, I wonder what God is, is, is wanting me to do. I wonder what it is that he is in constant communication with you. Constant. Even when it's time to go from somewhere, it's already been revealed before the time is up. Before it's time for you to, I'm, listen to me. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, right? So if God is with you, there's no confusion. He wasn't confused when he made this world. He's not confused when he brings the seasons. He's not confused when it's going to rain. There's no confusion. The Bible said God out of confusion, but of peace. None of the brothers in the Bible was confused when they was with God. None of them. Read your Bible from the Old to New Testament. God was with them, right? He directed and he ordered their steps. So they knew everything that was come before it came. Prophecies was given, revelations. They knew even before Paul got arrested, he knew about it. The Holy Spirit. So you have the creator of this world. He knows everything. Satan doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow. He doesn't. These psychics and these people that portray to have these powers, they just, the devil knows the heart of men. He know what men want. So he will put things in position to try to bring forth unrighteousness. But because many don't have the spirit and they lack the knowledge of scripture, they think these things are coming from God. So the devil doesn't know the future. If he did, he wouldn't have went against God. If he knew the future, then he wouldn't have tried to kill Christ or get Christ, um, kill Christ. He wouldn't have did that, knowing that I was going to defeat him. Why would he defeat himself? So he doesn't know the future, right? When he killed all those babies, when he made the king kill all those babies, when Jesus Christ was born, he didn't. if he knew the future, why, didn't he, wouldn't he have known that he didn't kill Jesus? They escaped into Egypt. If he knew that Paul was going to get converted and become a Christian and write all those epistles that we're reading today, you think that he would have, you know, let Paul live? Before he could have killed them or something like that. Before he was converted. Come on brothers and sisters. He doesn't know the future. These psychics. They just know the heart of man. And Satan can see certain things. That God might have certain grace or power. Or angels position certain places. So these things can be communicated to these fortune tellers. And these sorcerers. To be able to say well you know. This building might collapse. Because once it was strong angels that was protecting it. And now that is only one angel that's left. So Satan knows from history and from time. When, when God removes his protection. That's usually when something is bad is going to happen to a person or a place. So he knows that. So he'll communicate that to these people. And they'll say, oh yeah, you know, there's a tragedy that's going to happen. Because Satan knows. Because the grace is being removed over whatever it is that there's going to be a tragedy. They can't tell you exactly when. You've never seen them ever pinpoint a date and time. That's never been. Right? Only God has done that. So that's the difference. So a true Christian is one who lives like Christ. You don't just eat what you want. You don't just wear what you want. You are a representation of God on this earth. You can't just... Get on the phone and just say what you want. You can't just make a Facebook video. You can't just post a post on Facebook. The Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. A true Christian is only going to move when God tells him. It's going to always be for the glory of God. A true Christian is never going to ask for money. They're never going to say sow a seed. And they're never going to agree with something that's not in the Bible. And they're never going to argue the word of God. A true Christian. A true Christian will see what the scripture says and that's what it is. A false Christian will see what the scripture says and, and, and have a hard time accepting what it is that was spoken or what, they, what was read to them or what they read. They will try to find ways around that supports their sin by using scriptures that will contradict what it is that they see that's troubling them. That's a false Christian. A true Christian. And you say, why is there false Christians? Well, Satan did it. Because it has to be a war. Right? There has to be a war. Just like there was light and darkness. There was good and there's evil. Right? So, many people... He knows the power that God has. He knows the, the truth that's in the word. He knows that if people truly believed and knew the truth. Right? Many of them will be mad. 
Many will be angry or many of them will still try to force themselves to live a God fearing life, even though it's not in their heart. So he knows these things. So his job is to try to deceive as many as he can to try to take them to hell. So he moves through regular people. When you look at the false Christians, they're regular people. That's why they curse. They get angry. They, they gossip. They, they be on Facebook arguing. Look at their posts. They be angry. It's the same as a person who don't have any faith or any belief. Not that they have faith either, but it's just insanity, right? And sanity is all through the world. You got a person that's bungee jumping, skydiving. That's insanity, extreme foolishness. You got people that's racing in their cars, going 100 miles per hour through, through back roads and through streets and believing they can, they can make the curve. You got NASCAR drivers that's running around. You got people that's, that's, you look at these rappers that's passing away and different things happen. People are like, what's going on? You, you, this world, they promote violence in movies. They promote sex. Women walk around showing their, their bottoms all out and they get mad when a, per a person compliments them. It's insanity all around us. People have rejected their natural body. They use steroids. People, women have rejected their natural hair, their natural skin, their natural breasts, their natural bottoms, and they go and get fake stuff. So the reality is not as accepted in this world. False is accepted. So you see, so everybody gets convicted. That's why people gravitate to things and they bring that insanity into what it is that they find interest in. And a lot of those people come to false Christianity. And when they come to false Christianity, they be extreme. That's why they'll do all the things that they feel is of God. But when they see what the Bible actually says, they don't agree with it because they're not believers. They just chose through insanity to believe in something that's called Christianity. And they put their own twist on it. You see, that's the reality. So this is why you see they still sin. They don't even believe that God can make you to where you don't sin. You can show them in the Bible where people didn't even sin. They'd be like, oh, that was in the Bible. They don't have any faith. Remember, the preaching of the cross, the Bible says, is foolish to those who are perishing. But to those who are saved, it is the power of God. Why do the people that claim to be Christians, when they see that, that God worked his power through people, had them spotless and blameless, they don't believe it's possible. Because they're not believers. They don't believe that God has that ability and that power. Because they're just like the rest of the world. Listen to me. A person could have cancer. And come to a man of God. And get the demon of sickness casted out of them. And become healed. Another person can have the same cancer. And see that person receive deliverance. And still don't come to get prayed for. Because they still don't believe. Even though they've seen it with their eyes. You follow me? So a person right now can a person right now can have cancer and can see a person get healed from that same cancer and still will say that's witchcraft, that's sorcery. That's not real. They're faking because they don't believe in their heart that being healed from cancer is possible and they are content with the hand that was dealt to them that they're going to have cancer. And have to battle with this throughout their life. Listen to me now. In the four gospels. When Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior. Walked this earth and healed people. Did the Pharisees come and get prayed for? Did the Sadducees come and get prayed for? Did many of those who were. Roman soldiers and Roman citizens. Did they come and get prayed for? I'm just asking. Many seen miracles. This, the, 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 the religious folks that were false believers they seen the lord perform a miracle on a sabbath day and instead of them saying man this is the wonderful works of god they said he healed on the sabbath day then they said your disciples walk around and and without washing their hands they seen miracles and they cursed him they seen demons being casted out and they said that he was the devil Matthew 12. They seen signs and wonders. And they still ask for more signs and wonders. Do you understand now, brothers and sisters? It's insanity. You can see the truth and still not believe. 
You can see the power and still think it's not God's power. God power came first. All much of what you see today, 99% is witchcraft, satanic power, magician, sorcery, trickery. That's what you see today. 99%. 99%. So many people who claim to be Christians, they have insanity because they're believing in something. They have control issues. They're pride. They're arrogant. They think they can just come and bully the Bible. They think they can just come and take a religion and, and transform it. They think that because they're living and they're walking, that they can just take the Bible and just make it be what they want it to be. Women can preach. Paul was only talking to those Christians. How do you know that? If you're not sure who Paul was talking to about women not preaching, why not stay safe? Did you talk to Paul? Are you did you go to Paul's grave? Have you visit him in the light to go and ask him, is it all women, Paul, or just these Corinthians? But what about when you told Timothy as well? So should why not play it safe? Why not play it safe and just say, hey, it says that women can't preach. They need to be silent in the churches. And, you know, every epistle was read to the other churches. So they heard the same thing. That's why no woman in the Bible was ever mentioned having a calling or preaching or teaching. Never in the New Testament. You see, you see how you can see these things, but people still don't see it because they don't want to see it. They're blinded. And a lot of people have delusions over them that was given to them by God. That's right. Go to 2 Thessalonians. It's three chapters. Read it. The Bible said that God will give them a strong delusion. Because they found pleasure and unrighteousness. So you got people walking around this day saying, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. God did that. God did that. So he can use these fake Christians. Right? As an example. To show the world what not to be, what not to look like, what it looks like when his power is not in your life, what it looks like when he's not with you. you they're going to be going to the doctors just like you, the unbelievers. They're going to be taking medicine just like the, the ones who don't believe in God. He allowed that. He did that. Read Thessalonians. He gave them a strong delusion. So that means that you could be talking to a person that's delusional and you fighting against God. Because he made them delusional. Read 2 Thessalonians. I'm not making this up. Those who see the word of God and, and still want to remain in sin and in darkness and unrighteousness and hearts is still for the world and still for the devil. But through their delusion and their pride, right? And insanity, they say, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. The Bible said they profess to know God, but in works they do what? Deny him. They are abominable. He said, reprobate, good for nothing. The Bible said they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such to turn away from. Because they're insane and they just say, you know what? I'm going to be a Christian for whatever reason that they want to be a false Christian for. Pride, reputation, getting seed sown. You know, just think about it. Look at all the look at most of these gospel songs that you hear. They all talk about how I want to believe I was ready to throw the towel in. No Christian will talk like that. We're already instructed what's going to happen tomorrow and what's going to happen next week. We're already instructed. True men of God, we got angels that's with us. You can't even come to us playing, perpetrating, being deceiving. We'll see through it. We'll see through it. We have power in us. We have treasures and earthen vessels. You can't come lying to us. You can't say, Brother Ronald, I'm not fornicating. And you are fornicating. God's going to tell us. Ask anybody that talks to me. The things that God has revealed through this vessel. You can't deceive the light. If you saying darkness is beating you and you have the spirit, you're saying the darkness is beating Christ. That's blasphemy. We are, Luke 10 say he give us power. 
Why you think when the Lord <laughs> never buy? But listen, the difference between those who are Christians and those who are false Christians is that religious folks always give God a time. Right? When the church opens, when it's offering, when it's benediction, when it's time to sing, that's that's false Christianity. The Holy Spirit does as it will. Church is every day, the same way it was in the four gospels, the same way it was in the New Testament. They worship and serve God every day. People are not trying to deal with you every day because they're not true Christians. You have to really be born again. You become new because the spirit comes in you and transforms you and changes you. So it makes it easy. I know it's not easy, brothers and sisters, because you don't have the spirit. You're just, you read about something, you, you know a few things about it, and, and that's just what it is. That's why a lot of people fall into insanity when they try to practice Christianity as a hobby. That's why you see all these folks are going around trying to be prayed for and going to different, you know, false prophets gatherings because they're being attacked. If you just will just be who you are and say, you know what? I like sin. You know, I, I, I hear what they say about God, but I like to fornicate. I like to mess. I like to be angry. I like to like drink, I like to smoke, I like to have, I like to do all these things. If you just kept that mind frame, the demons wouldn't even trouble you the way they are. But because you're playing both sides, you're double minded and you're saving all your ways. So that makes God re lose, remove his grace that was over you because you have pride and you harden your heart. So now Satan is like, okay, I'm, they don't got much protection. I'm going to take them out, right? So they're coming, they're coming, they're coming till they finally get you. But those who are born again, we're not getting attacked by no demons. You don't, ne you have, you will never look on my Facebook page and say, and ask me, and for me, I have ever wrote and said, pray for me. Pray for me, y'all. Why do I need y'all to pray for me when there's an angel that's with me by the grace of God, when there's grace over my life? When there's protection, when I'm in the will of God, nothing can can befall me. I'm in God's will. There ain't no sicknesses. There ain't no diseases. There's no nothing. I don't got no medical insurance. I don't have none of those things. No dental insurance. I don't have nothing. I ain't been in the dentist. I can't tell you how long. The last time I went to the doctors was probably shortly before I received prayer and was delivered and was healed. Since then, never been. Never. There ain't no sicknesses. There ain't no, there's none of those things. You are in God's care. We have work to do. We can't be sitting around. I got COVID. I got the flu. I got this and that. How? How are you going to encourage others that God is a healer? See, people that don't really believe, they see God in their imagination, how they make them. Not as the Bible shows him. God is powerful. Why he let his angels fight the devil? God, it's too much power. It's like an elephant trying to, to fight against a mouse. You know, come on. You know, put a cat against the, the rat. Then they might have a little scuffle back and forth. But you bring an elephant against a mouse. Come on. You ever see in the Bible where God fought against, um, fought against Samuel? Yeah, but this is all I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters. I have never asked anybody to pray for me. Right? As far as when people ask for you to pray for them, they're talking about because they're being attacked. They're being tormented. You can y'all can call it whatever you want. I'm telling you that I'm in his care. Right? I'm in his care. I don't need to say things that that's not bothering me, that's not affecting me. I don't need a person to to pray for me. Your prayer's not going to be heard anyway if your heart's not in the right place. That's the seat and delusion right there. You're a sinner. God don't hear the prayers of sinners. So I'm not asking, 99% of people are not even true Christians. So I'm not asking no false Christians to pray for me. Them prayers ain't going nowhere. How many? How long have people been asking people to pray for them and has their situation changed? That's my question. How long? We don't need prayer when we have perfect peace. What am I asking God for? He said he'll keep you in perfect peace. If you want to pray for me, praise the Lord. But I'm not going to ask you to pray for me because I'm being attacked by demons or I'm sick. Or I need to be healed, or I, I'm 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 hurt, or I'm affected, or I feel like throwing a towel in. No, he said he'll keep you in perfect peace, who mind is stayed on thee, cause thou trustest in thee. Right? It says that my peace I give you, not as the world gives you. So if you have perfect peace, 
then what are you praying for? What are you affected by? When they said to pray, we're praying that people's hearts will be open to receive God. We're praying that man will see the truth of God's word. We're praying that the word of God will be received. No man can come unless the father draws them. So you can pray all day till you're blue in the face. It's God that draws man. It's God that does these things. It's not man. That's man. See, this is this is false Christianity. When man thinks he has all his power and his abilities. Right? You have to first be sent by God. I pray for many people. But Christ is with me. God is with me. So I have perfect peace. There's nothing that I need to be prayed for. What do I need to be prayed for? I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm not sick. I'm not being attacked by demons. What do I need people to pray for me for? What do I need to ask someone to pray for me for? If a person wants to pray for me, that's fine. If they're truly born again. If not, it's a sin. Because you're mocking God. If you're trying to pray for me. So I'm careful. I'm not asking no one. Because the day and age that we're living in, we're not surrounded by true Christians. We're surrounded by false Christians. That's the truth. I'm not letting no false Christian pray for me. There's many times I've been places people like, oh, I want to say a prayer with you. And they're false believers. That's a sin. The Bible says, if any man keep not this doctrine, allow him not into your house, nor bid him Godspeed. He that bid of him Godspeed is a particular of evil deeds. That's the word of God. Everybody is not your brother. Everybody's not your sister. Paul said, love them, you know, who love, who call him the Lord out of a sincere heart, genuine heart. You see? So that's the reality, brothers and sisters. People can call me names. They can say whatever they want to say. I speak forth the truth. See in yourself if you be in faith. I'm speaking the truth. If y'all think it's normal to be attacked by demons, that's your life. We're not brothers. We're not, we're not, we're not Christian brothers. We're, we're, we're not um, yoke fellows because I disagree and that's not biblical. You can't show me nowhere in the Bible where the believers were being attacked by demons. Don't try to misinterpret a Bible verse. Don't tell me that Paul had a demon. That's the devil in you. You're not my brother. You're not my sister to, to say that God can't protect us from darkness. That the Holy Spirit is getting bullied by darkness. That the spirit of the living God, that is light and fire, is being affected by these weak and puny spirits. You're telling me that that's possible. With the powerful God that I serve, you're foolish. Before I was getting attacked by demons, before I was getting held down in my sleeps, before I was having sex in my dreams, yes, because I didn't know God, I didn't have the spirit of God. I was sick all, I had high blood pressure, dizzy spells, lightheaded, many challenges because I didn't know God. That's the truth. But when I got delivered and I got saved and I became born again, all those things went away. The same way you see, there's never mention of Peter being attacked by a demon. There's never mention Paul being attacked, James, John, none of them being attacked by spirit. Oh, the spiritual, people say spiritual warfare. That's not even biblical. Where's the word spiritual warfare in the Bible? How they use it today? Where's the Bible say we, 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 we're going to be attacked by demons. If you're being attacked, God is not with you. That, it's that simple. If you don't believe it, then enjoy your life with your false belief. But don't try to force your falsehood on someone else. It's not going to happen. I've been on Facebook since 2015. Ain't nothing that nobody could write me, text me, call me, will change where I stand. That's the devil making you believe that you can be successful in altering what I'm saying. It's not happening. It's not happening. I read that Bible. I live that word. I pray three times a day. I read that Bible every day. I live in it. It's my daily bread. You can't tell me that what I'm speaking is not biblical. When Paul said in Second Corinthians, seeing that we have the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believe. 
therefore I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. So what I see in the word of God is what I'm speaking today. The Bible said in Revelations in the last chapter, don't add to God's word nor take away from it. I speak forth the truth. Luke 10 and 19 says, behold, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. First John 5 and 18. It says, whoever is born of God, sinneth not. He that's begotten of God, keep himself and the wicked one touches him not. That's the word. First John 5 and 18. Tell me what I'm speaking is not biblical. I'm not here to argue and debate the word of God. I have faith. You don't. One who knows the truth. My name is Ronald. I'm going to fight with you back and forth saying my name is Ronald. Your name's not Ronald. It's Bob. I know what my name is. If you don't want to believe that, you can have you can see my name written on my shirt and still won't believe. Because living in that false illusion gives you comfort. Because 99% of those who claim to be Christians find pleasure in sin. And happen to know they're going to go to hell and they're they're going to be burning, weeping and gnashing of teeth, being tortured and tormented. It's not pleasurable to think that way when you're angry, frustrated, lusting, gluttony, lazy. It's not comfortable. So you got to convince yourself, oh, God will forgive me. How is he going to forgive you when the Bible said if you sin willfully after you have received knowledge of truth that there remains no more sacrifice for sins? And how is God going to hear you, sinners, that's claim to be Christians? When the Bible say in the book of John 9 that he hear of not the sinners. So if you tell me today that you sinned yesterday and you sin today and you sin tomorrow, you are a child of the devil according to 1 John 3. That's the word. Tell me what I'm saying is not biblical. What's the Bible saying in 1 John 3? They who sin is a child of the devil. I don't live in sin. What have I done today? Because you can't, because you want to sin. They say, that's your delusion. That's insanity. You think everybody got the same problem. I've been married for almost seven years. And ask me, have I cheated on my wife? Ask me, have I committed adultery? So I got a perfect track record of not committing adultery, nor cheating, nor fornicating with a, with a, a strange woman. Ask me. Ask me, do I desire to drink bleach? Ask me, do I desire to drink antifreeze? It looks like Gatorade is blue. Blue Gatorade is one of my favorite Gatorades. Ask me, do I desire to drink antifreeze when I know the repercussions that come behind drinking antifreeze? I'm just saying, if I was an unbeliever, would I drink antifreeze? So how are you a believer and you know that the wage of sin is death? You know that sin is what broke God's heart. That he repented that he made man because they were living unrighteously. That he was on that cross Nailed through his feet. Nailed through his hands. They put thorns on his head. These sinners. The wicked and the evil people. That he was in the garden of a cinnamon. Sweating like blood drops of his off coming off his head. And you telling me that you're going to take living in sin lightly? When God poured out everything on Christ. You don't know what he felt on that cross. You don't know how he feels towards sin. The Bible says my master hates iniquity. The Bible said to arbor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. The Bible say where in the book of Job that Job eschewed from evil. He avoided it. The Bible said Jacob said that the angel redeemed him from all evil. Y'all take sin as a joke. Sin is of the devil. If you know that something is wrong, have you robbed a bank? How many of y'all haven't had money in your life? Have you thought to go and rob a bank? Why can't that be your heart towards sin? It's your choice. Nothing forced you to sin. You have went days when you masturbated for three days in a row. You have went days when you haven't masturbated at all because you had a stomach infection or you've been too busy or you had long hours and you got home, you've been too tired. So you have control. Stop making it seem as if 
You can't control yourself when it comes to sin. That is delusion. If you choose to curse right now, you are choosing to curse. Satan couldn't force Eve to eat that fruit. He can't force you to do anything. Satan couldn't force Cain to kill Abel. God told him, if you do what's right, you'll be accepted. It's a choice. The Bible said that the light came into the world. But men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. It never said that you couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. It said that men love darkness rather than the light. So all this talk about I'm struggling or we're going to always sin. No, you're going to always sin because you find pleasure in it and you're delusional. You have insanity and you have pride to keep telling yourself those lies. And believe in them. See? You're telling yourself that you're going to always sin. Yeah, because you find pleasure in it. So that's delusion. I find no pleasure in the things that's against my God. Do you find pleasure in someone raping your wife? Molesting your children? Hurting someone in your family? Do you find pleasure in that? No. No. So why can't you not find pleasure in sin when you control whether you put your penis in a woman's vagina or you let a man put his penis in your vagina? When you control whether you drink some liquor or you gossip, shut your mouth. The Bible says your eye offends you, gorge it out. Your hand offends you, cut it off. Y'all pump faking. Tell them, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deal with this. Go move right now to a, 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 a island somewhere in the Mediterranean if you lust that much after women. So you're just going to keep lust after women and you're struggling. You better go move where there's no women. You better go lo get locked up in prison for the rest of your life. At least you'll go to heaven if your lust is that strong for women. Y'all just, y'all just, y'all reaching. You're making up stuff. Ain't none of y'all took it serious to stop your sins. The Bible say cut your hand off. You want to gossip, sisters, brothers, close your mouth. Your tongue is only going to move when you control it. How are you going to get angry at these people when they don't know any better? When they never read a Bible day in their life? When they never heard love? Y'all said, Every, all these women, they just know that. Yeah, because you're choosing worldly women. And you're choosing worldly men. Who care if they claim to be Christians? The Bible says to try the spirit. It, it, everything you need to, to be successful in life in Christ, the Bible has already told you, and the Spirit helps you. But without the Spirit, I understand what happens to you. You're lost. So you got to connect to someone that's spiritual. You see? That's the reality, brothers and sisters. Oh, this woman took advantage of me. She was worldly. You've seen the signs, but you found pleasure in how she was. You didn't find pleasure in how she hurt you, though. You found pleasure in how that man were. Some of y'all, oh, I found a good Christian man. But he's already talking about fornicate. He's talking about master. He's talking about sex. He's talking about when y'all get married, how good love is going to be. He's a deceiver. The same way Satan is. You see? You're not Christians. You got to be born again and truly go through deliverance and truly forsake your life of sin. If not, you're going to just keep living in the delusion. Telling yourself that it's normal being attacked by demons. That I'm always going to struggle with sin. I'm not struggling with sin because what happens is, is once the gospel was preached and once the spirit came and the grace comes, our eyes are open now. We know how to think. The Bible said, think on these things that are lovely, things that are just, things that are honest. You're taught differently now. All your life before Christ came in the picture, you thought the way the world thought. You walked the way the world walked. You talked the way the world talked. Paul said, I was like this. I like that. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Talking about being born again because the word of God gives you knowledge and wisdom and understanding how to navigate through these troubled waters. That's the word. So in, in this world, when you see people that still affected and they claim to be Christians, they're not believers because you have been instructed now through the word of God, how to live in this world amongst the heathens, amongst unbelievers, amongst whatever. Turn the cheek. Forgive. Bless those who curse you. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them. What's my usually persecute you? You see? We've been told. 
So why are you gossiping when someone do, does you wrong? The Bible already says that you're going to be hated for Christ's sake. It says that. That in this world you're going to have trouble. It's talking about persecution. Because you're living in an ungodly world. And if you're truly living righteous, you're going to always bump heads with the unrighteous. They're going to always come and persecute and say mean things. They always do that. Oh, look at this. Uh, oh, look at my people took advantage of me. You're, you're friends with people who are not Christians. And you're not a Christian. That's why Christ, that's why God gets such a bad name. Because all these false believers misrepresent God. That's the truth. True believers, we don't get attacked by demons. We are not living in sin. We know better. You know how to drive a car. You still driving through a red light? Before you got your license, did you know how to drive? Before you got your license, did you know how to drive? Did you know how to drive? You see? You didn't. So you had to learn how to be a good driver. That's what happens when the word of God comes in our heart. Or when we receive it, we become righteous and holy, godly in this perverse world. That's why the Bible says to have known the way and depart from it. It's best you have not known the way. You see? So it's a choice. Once your eyes are open, it's your choice now to say, okay, I want to become righteous or I want to live in sin. It's a choice. And 99% have seen that and say, you know what? I still like darkness. But I don't want to say that because now I know the repercussions that come from, from being a sinner. So they pay tithes and offerings. They wear suits. They wear dresses. They look like the rest of the world. Right? Christ didn't look like none of these pastors that you see preached today. None of them. He didn't even talk. He didn't walk. He didn't act like them. He wasn't as hungry as them. All these overweight pastors. Christ went 40 days fasting. He went many days without eating. Food was not his God. They even asked him, was he hungry? He said, my meat is not of this world. It's to do the will of my father, to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. He wasn't, he wasn't in love with food. He didn't gossip. He didn't talk about politics. He didn't talk about everything that was going on in the world. He was busy. Reaching the loss, preaching peace, bringing glad tidings, being a righteous example amongst mankind. That's why they loved him, because their conscience connected with the righteousness that was in him. You see, they felt like they knew him all their life because of the love they felt from him. Not him puffing himself up. Oh, I'm this. I'm the greatest. I'm this. That's how the Pharisees was. That's why they didn't reject him. They said, who is this man? He speak with so much authority, not like the scribes. So they knew the difference. A true Christian is going to walk in power. They're going to cast out demons daily. The Lord is going to perform miracle signs and wonders and healings daily through true men of God. We have prayers take place every day. We're just not recording them. But we have recorded many over the years. To show you the truth. Mean things that Christ did is not written. The Bible said it wouldn't be a book that could contain it all. See? But he gave you enough to increase your faith. So you understand? A true Christian is one who is walking in power. One who is being used by God. Power. Power over this body. Power over the mind. One who's not confused. But talking about what a true Christian is, it won't truly help people, but they just got to see. That's the way it always been. You can sit here and talk, 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 but people will have to see. And they're still going to talk bad about it because the Bible said the way of truth will be evil spoken of. That's why when I make these videos, people say they slander me, but I'm only speaking the truth. Who can say what I said wasn't biblical? But what they can say is that they don't agree what I'm saying because they don't agree with God's word. You see, they're not Christians. They're in delusion. They're insane. Why do you think people believe in aliens? Why do you think folks believe in Bigfoot? They don't never want to find Bigfoot. 
Because it'll take away their entertainment, their enjoyment. Them having to realize that Bigfoot doesn't exist. Then that mean that other false realities that they find comfort in, they'll have to accept those realities. If they believe that aliens don't exist, right? They don't ever want to see a real alien. Because then they won't have comfort in their false reality. They don't want to discover that it's not true. Because people find comfort in what is not true. A woman can cheat on a man and get caught. And the man will say it was the guy's fault that made my wife cheat. Because he don't want to embrace reality. That you have an unfaithful woman. You wear weave and makeup and get your nails done. Take steroids. Because you don't want to accept how your body truly looks. What is a true Christian? One who lives like Christ. According to that word. One who is not going to say I'm struggling in sin. You're not a Christian. You're not my brother. You're not my sister. To sit here and say that demons can attack us. That's the devil in you. That you being held down and you got the spirit of living God inside of you. What do you think is happening to God? He's being held down in, 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 in heaven. He said that he will come in us and be our God. When Jesus showed himself at a, at a specific time when they came to arrest him, he showed them who he truly was and they all fell back. You see that power? You see that power? Why do you think when, when, when I pray for people and they start manifesting, the light is exposed in the darkness, the fire. The Bible said in Hebrews, he made, us, he made his ministers a flame of fire, right? So that they're, 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 the spirit is being tortured. They're being affected by the light of God. Because why? God is a consuming fire. That's why they manifest like that. So if through prayer, I have prayed for many people that had multiple demons, strong demons, principalities, kingdoms, just name it. And they all bowed in the name of Jesus Christ. How is the, these demons going to just come and just hold me down when I'm sleeping? How are they going to just come attack me when... These are principalities, powerful demons that have been around for thousands of years in people that I'm praying for. And they have to listen to everything that I tell them because I have authority over them. Luke 10 and 19. Because of the spirit of living God is a consuming fire. They can't beat us. So how am I able to pray for these people to receive healings by the power of Jesus Christ? By the name of Jesus Christ. To... Have demons cast out of them. They have to obey what I say. But they can come to me when I'm sleeping. Or come to me and, and wherever. And just attack me. Come on. Make it make sense brothers and sisters. Make it make sense. We can see them. You're, you, you're watching this video. But you can't see where spirits are. You don't know where they're at. You're, you're looking people. You don't know that there's demons that roam. There's powerful demons that stand amongst Cities and stands amongst states. There's demons that are assigned to cities and states that cause certain things to happen. We see them. There's angels that's with us. That's powerful. Just a splash of the power of God destroys much darkness. Y'all don't know what you're talking about. When true men of God pray, just imagine seeing a, hur a hurricane or a tornado or a tsunami. You'll see demons just being swept up and, and taken to hell or even be destroyed by God's power. You know not of this life. You know not of this walk. It's real. That's why the Bible has to the test of time. The whole world is unrighteous, but those who are in Christ. Why would a righteous book still remain? Because God's power. You know not of this life. You see? So that's all I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters. The power of God, it comes in us and makes us to be perfect according to his will in this life of righteousness. Your perfect in the world is not the perfect that God is talking about. I don't know what a perfect person is in the world. How can you define that? Because everybody is built differently. Everybody's legs is not long. 
to run a, a, a certain speed or a certain time on a track. So you, how would you say this? What do you mean by perfect? You got a lot of places who have perfect track records. A lot of people do perfect things in their life. So the perfect that God is talking about is perfect in understanding. Perfect in righteousness. Perfect in love. Perfect in obedience. In full compliance to his word. That's what he means when he say perfect. I understand that sin is wrong. That darkness is wrong. That evil is wrong and it's against my God and sin will send you to hell. I'm not going to hell when salvation is free. All I have to do is believe and to be obedient. Before I came to God, I lived a life in sin and I seen what sin brought me. I did what I want. I ate what I want. I slept with women like I, when I wanted. I did everything I wanted. And I, I only thing I got in return was heartache and pain. And suffering and torment and being attacked by demons. So y'all can't tell me anything about, well, you know, the world, brothers and sisters, I'm here to stay in Christ. And him do I live, move and have my being. I worship him in the beauty of his holiness. The name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run into and are safe. All I'm coming here to say today, brothers and sisters that people that claim to know God and talk these ways and live these ways and act like the rest of the world, they don't know him. So I'm not here to judge them. I'm not here to name names. I'm only here to testify of the goodness of my God and to show you that if you were truly in him and he was with you and you truly had the Holy Spirit, your life would never be the same all around the board. No sick days. No being attacked by demons. Power. His grace. His mercy. Protection by angels. I know my angel. I met him. You see? Peter knew his. So did Jacob. Paul knew his as well. Read your word. So all I'm just trying to do is defend God. And confirm his word. Because Satan has infiltrated these religious organizations that they call churches and made people believe that suffering is normal as a Christian, that being attacked is normal, that you can't live a, a perfect life in Christ, that God doesn't have the power. So I'm here to defend him. That's all, brothers and sisters. If you choose to believe that Paul had demons and that you, that he had sicknesses and all this stuff and that you can't live a life without sin, you're not my brother. You're not my sister in Christ. I love you, but you're not a believer. To believe that God doesn't have the power over Satan, that's foolishness. I love you all. God bless.